himself. Come on. Reserve time. <laughs> nah. Nah, I know. <laughs> it sounded like I mean Anthony I mentioned that Spartan was in the bathroom, so I I don't I don't know how much of the, the, the weight was them trying to figure out what went wrong. I think a lot of it is just how they played their advantage. <laughs> the team is disbanding. They've lost one game. I mean this is the team that's never disbanded despite like everything they've gone through they weren't being they were like one of the most consistently tier two teams for a long time until they had their big breakout so um i think this is a team that's dealt with losses better than most and i think a lot of it's just going to look at how they played their advantage they had a very strong start they were really uh dominating the, the laning stage the early game they had some a really good laning setup they had some great first couple rotations using the knicks and the queen of pain but then things fell apart when they had a bad fight at the bottom lane they lost roche and they just lost control so perhaps going for something Reserve a bit less time. volatile with the draft um i think also the weaver just not maybe not less so as a pick but even with some of the itemization like went into the maelstrom which didn't do a whole lot in hindsight very clearly should have gone for an earlier bkb so i think some small adjustments in game one could have gone very dif differently for them Dark -sia. radiant team Such a, a good play um where they were showing one mid and that they were showing another one top. Uh, team pick. Tens Necrophos. Radiant team ban. Yep. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> Dire team back. That's something which, I mean, Fata, with a lot of the teams he's been on, maybe he's never been like the true captain of the team, but he's always been a great shot caller and really good as far as decision making goes. So you look at uh, Team Liquid, even though Kura was there, he was still very heavily involved in that. You look at back in the old Cloud Nine days, a lot of that kind of very. I mean, they played kind of passively. They were playing, they were waiting for their timing. A lot of that, I think, comes from Fata and his, his shot calling there. So, set his team up to succeed. But here we go. Game two draft, very different from what we saw in game one. A couple slightly different bands, most notably the Chen, but, and the Lone Druid slipping through. But Ten this is going to be a Necrophos, a Lone Druid, some of the more kind of flavor heroes at the moment Five coming into this remain. game two draft. Reserve time. <laughs> Dire team ban. <laughs> Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Yep. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Nedfim's a team who likes to, like, when they find something that works for them, they'll stick with it uh, until it stops working for them. Like, we saw the boss on, like, they just kept going back towards, like, the bounty hunter for MNT over and over again. Uh, that consistently run, like, the similar heroes for Thug in the mid lane with, the, the like, the OD, uh, as well as the Puck. So they are a team who will stick with what works. And, like, like you say, if it's working for them, why not? And against the Lone Druid... It, I'd say Necrophos good against the Spirit Bear, but I'm not sure the hero necessarily matches up that greatly against the Range Bear. You can, of course, go into the, the Ghost Shroud and you don't damage, but I'm not sure. If, I don't know how you feel about this Necro versus Lone Druid kind of matchup. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds remaining. 
Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Meeks assassin. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Sniper. Oh. Radiant team ban. <laughs> And this is the bloodlust of Sniper too. I saw the Ogre pick, I'm like, okay, they've got to be going some right-click mid laner. They're not bloodlusting a Necrophos. That's pretty pretty pointless. And Ogre is no longer like the must-pick support that he once was as far as for the Ignite harass in the mid lane. So almost always seeing this hero pair that with some kind of right-clicker. And yeah, the Sniper, pretty good this game. We mentioned Great Against Alone Druid. Slaughter, Nyx, like, have some gap close when they get their blinks. But I think overall Sniper isn't too afraid of those heroes. And... Uh, looking like a game where, as you, you kind of mentioned, like if they can hit their timings earlier and Sniper just needs like a Dragon Lance treads, maybe throw in a Maelstrom or something in there as well, uh, they can really take the fights to Bears before they're ready to uh, hit their timings. Ten seconds Spartan often plays the Ogre for them as well, so this could just be like a safe lane support Five Ogre or whatever, and they still get MNT on something a bit different, more aggressive, um, maybe with a bit more playmaking capability. So, not certain that this Ogre, they, they're necessarily looking for a Spartan hero. Could be, I guess, something for MNT. Haven't got best initiation. Ooh. Radiant team pick. That's interesting. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Yeah, they haven't, like, they've got a support four position slider. This is not like, I assume at least, based on the Knicks being picked up with it. Jakiro in the five role is like a tanky support. He's a bit harder to put pressure onto, but he's not a support that's going to be able to kind of win them the lanes. Lone Druid doesn't do well in the lanes. This is looking like a a rough laning stage for bears, but they, they managed at least game one okay with that. They last pick an Ember Spirit, another meta hero right now, a hero that does match up a bit better against the Sniper, gives them like a guaranteed gap close and some good damage output onto Sniper. And you're looking at very little lockdown and control, no real reliable stuns outside like a Fire Blast. The smoke screen can be good, um, against the Ember if he gets caught and doesn't have detection around him, but this is all in all a, a pretty good Ember game. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I really like Ricky against uh, Ember Spirit. You know, you slight a fist and you lay down the smoke cloud and he can't actually uh, the slight a fist and jump out to his remnant combination. And, uh, mm -hmm. Lading phase is going to be a little bit difficult as well for the Ember Spirit because of this Ricky Ten pickup. I, I feel like in, in some um, uh saw this Ember Spirit coming, Five and I'm, I'm sure many teams would because Ember Spirit's such a, uh, a value pick right now but i think in some ways the they're the potential spirit last pick that go the way of it see if it works yeah, out they, just, them, though. I mean, they they know they've got a pretty good laning advantage with sniper against it as well uh and there's not much roaming potential out of the like the slider jakiro slider to a small extent can move around the map but uh, as long as the Ricky is kind of around the mid lane or scouting out the slider rotations, I imagine uh, this sniper should be able to have a bit of an advantage mid against Ember Spirit. One of the best things about Ricky, usually uncontested vision. Yep. Let's see, maybe next time do that quite early. TP's out, trying to get some vision of what uh, bears are up to right now, see where their rotation they plan on doing aggressive it looks like anfinim aren't just going to go for a regular setup here no aggressive lanes like we saw from last time and uh, bears 
are going to match that. They're just going to have an off lane Nick. Off lane Darkseer. I think uh, I'm thinking Lone Druid should be able to deal with the Darkseer Ricky pretty well, and Jakiro's quite tanky as well. So I, I'm not sure if there's going to be too many issues with that lane. Yeah, for, for this bears. is one of the better heroes, and once you get a couple of levels, then you've got the the Savage Roar as well to push them away if they're diving you. So you're perhaps a bit worried about the rotations from like Ogre, but for the most part, you're okay in this lane. Oh, get it. Get it! Oh, didn't get it. Firo tries to I go for a lot of the damage. extra bounty rune, but this yeah. ends up uh, being his bear down to 300 HP, no extra bounty rune gained, and uh, I like <laughs> runs it down for a little bit more. It's not going to shrine his bear, is he? It doesn't seem like the optimal shrine usage in the early game. He may just resummon it. He's got to. Oh, he can send it to base, but he can't recall it until he's level three. So, see what the plan's going to be. MNT trying to block this pull once again, and will succeed in doing so. Yeah, uh, he does have the counter ward there for the uh, observer ward that's blocking out. So once he actually sees that it's blocked out and Ricky's not in lane, he may be able to fish out that ward, but. For now, the lane is going to be a bit problematic, as you can see. Firo is already feeling a lot of pressure, and his air is not quite yet fully healed. Yeah, that's a tough ward to spot as well. Even though it's like you'd think you could get vision off it from where he's standing, it's the vision around there is very awkward, so won't be able to do so. Mid lane, Fada is going to have to deal with Spartan, doing ogre things, the big dumb ogre, and just kind of sitting in lane and zoning, uh, zoning that melee Ooh, top hero lane. back. So. Thug's going to be able to get an early advantage. Uh, he's in some trouble here. They do have uh, another crush coming in in a second here, but it looks like it's only right clicks that are needed. So Spartan Level one leaving carapace. this lane and GG. He carapace the death pulse. There. I don't think he was expecting a level one carapace to come out from four him. That was, that was uh, else. a sick call. And well, that was a, yeah, I mean, it should be a fine lane for Necrophos. He just got a bit too overconfident. He had a huge creep weight to his advantage, and he's like, oh, I'm a Necrophos. I got this magic wand. I've got tangos. I've got all these stats. And he just slightly outplays himself more than anything. Zero and 343, three, Adam. Trying to contest this pull as best they can. Get some damage on the baby next time, but he runs out of the sentry. We'll be okay now. While in mid lane, seven and one for Fada's Ember Spirit, seven and three already for Thug. So Spartan seeming not to have uh, too much of an impact on this lane. Uh, Fada still managed to pick up a decent amount of CS. He's going to return for round two with the double damage this time around and a fire blast. So they're going to get a lot of damage on Fada. Might even be able to bring him down. Bumps in front, managed to get the chains out, but the right clicks are enough with double damage on Spartan. Manages to uh, pick up. Did kill, so may not be first blood, but it is a huge win for Thug. Yeah, nicely played. It gets Thug a bit of a bigger advantage in this mid lane that he wasn't quite finding with the Ogre. Didn't go for the Ignite, which is perhaps why the CS was a bit more even, but the Fire Blast sets up the kill there. So Thug very Hero. happy with how this mid lane is going to go. He does not have Savage Roar, and he's kind of stuck in the trees here. Tries to juke his way around, but the Ion Shell will burn him down nonetheless, so... Despite us saying that the Lone Druid should be able to deal with this lane all right, here to be fully the case here. Pound of Wards and this combination of Darkseer uh, and Riki is too powerful for uh, the Lone Druid. Yeah, this is a, a lane that's going to be a big problem for bears, and they haven't really got an easy solution. Perhaps Slardic can try and help it out, but they've kind of decided that pressuring Madara at top is going to be better use of Yapster's time. I kind of agree with this. You can see Madara's CS is kind of struggling as a result. Uh, there's a lot of threat to his life as well. If Yapster can get a good crush off into a level 2 Impale, that's a good killing combo. Mid lane, Fata. Going to be run here. down here. They do have the vision here, and that is going to be the last ramp. No, maybe Fada can juke his way around the trees, but no, Spartan just stays locked on. He doesn't give a damn about that tower. Just tanks it up as a good ogre should, and allows them to be able to go for the tower dive. Another kill onto Fada's Ember Spirit. Uh, that's where he's likely should be asking for it. That's one of those scenarios where like someone should be TPing in, but I, m I imagine that Tim had probably called, hey, no one's got a TP. Like, if you get that memo from your sidelines that there's no TPs on, like, a Slada or a Jakira, you can go for that kind of aggressive move. Absor going for Spartan here. He may be low HP, but he's high armor. Crush does very little at uh, that tanky sports, so not able to find any sort of turnaround kill. 
It's Boots and Aquila on Sniper now, very early on, so this lane only gets tougher now for Vata's Ember Spirit. And Slada Yapser is going to perhaps try and stick around a little bit to keep him alive, but he's not going to be able to find kills without any additional help in the lane. Maybe next time he's actually making a rotation over, and Fada just chose that time to get aggressive on the Thug. Now he's out of position, slowed down by the Smoke Cloud, and will be beaten to death. All the physical damage coming out from Ad Venom. Yet another death. Bin laner of Bears. And Firo hadn't, hasn't been faring too well against that Darkseer either, so all of these lanes are going very poorly for Bears, including Ferev, who managed to find that early kill onto uh, Madara and is 31 and 3 when it comes to CS. He is top of the board yeah. right now. Quite impressive. He's going to have a very early level 6 and he's going to probably have a lot of pressure on him to start solving some of these problems in the other lanes. Uh, he's farming well. He's going to have the fast 6 with Arcane Boots, but yeah. he needs to find kills with that Vendetta elsewhere. He needs to help out his team as much as possible. You think Fada and Firo are like... Help me out when you get level oh, 6. Top. No, 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 help me out. Firo, gonna be dove a little it's bit top map. lane. Madara, he does manage to get off the okay. push route, so he'll be good now. Yeah, gets that extra regen as well with the one, so... There's the That'll dive. get him out of there, but he's... Savage Roar is up, but Skylark was not in range with the Savage Roar, so he's still going to try and run him down with a Surge. Try and stay in range with the Ion Shell. Need a little bit of luck there to be able to get the Spirit Bear and Tangle. Firo, he runs out and will manage to get away. No, a Surge comes out. Firo, <laughs> he may still be him. dope here. Maybe next time he's got the jump forward and will manage to pick up the kill. Nicely played out by Ad Fidim. Yeah, nicely played. That's, bro. That's a solo kill for Ricky. Gets him a good chunk Maybe of golden XP. He's level four and a half all of a sudden. Spartan's like aggressively contesting enemy bounty runes now. Like he's deep in the enemy side of the jungle. Doesn't seem to give a crap. Right by a shrine, he could theoretically just get TP'd on here. But he's he's still in the centaur. He's like, all right, this this seems like a safe thing to do. And realistically, if two heroes go and gank him, it's a lot of space for his team. And I don't think he really sees any big threat. He knows Lone Druid wants to keep on farming. Ember's being kind of pushed out of the lane, so everything going well in the early game for Ad Finum. And Forev knows how to pressure. This Necrophos, I like it. Uh, he's picked up a couple of things, right? He's picked up the, the PMS, pretty natural, but he also went for the Quelling Blade, meaning that he's got a, a right-click advantage over Necrophos when it comes to CSing. Mid lane, Vada actually managed to try to turn around here onto Baby next time. They're going to try and burst him down with the help of the Crush. He managed to stop the Smoke Clomp, but a missed percentage chance is not going to be enough. Rev comes in with his Vendetta. He actually wanted to go for Thug, trying to get all three of those kills, but Thug is far enough back, so they turn on Spartan instead, killing two supports who try once again to gank Fada. Fada says, not this time. At right back to lane, thanks to his Spirit. Full health and full map. Yeah, great little turnaround though, ready for it. Four of even making his first rotation, getting active and... Look for Thug again, he's a bit low, but gets the salve coming in. Phase boots, he's gonna be more than okay and... Ad Finna may just focus their attention elsewhere, like back towards his bottom lane, a smoked up Ogre Magi. They could look to set up on Firo here. Not sure they even need the Ogre, it may be a safer kill with the Ogre. They may look to wait for Spartan to show up. And they may need the extra stun inside of the smoke cloud to uh, prevent that ability right there. The Savage Roar. Firo oh, diving. diving into trees here. He's going to go into melee form, try and tank himself up. But the TPs come in. Maybe next time the rest of his crew back off, knowing they forced TPs, but didn't get the kill anyway. So good enough for them. Fada picks up an Invis rune. That's got to be uh, quite a relief for him. He knows that he'll have some sort of escape. Uh, maybe next time. Once oh, again. They, They're still going to go for this dive, dive yeah. Bear comes out. Alright. Spartan's going to be chased okay, away. There's going to be more TPs. As well. This is going to be a long TP. And Ix Assassin cancels it. He says, that is too long of a TP for me to actually be able to do anything. Surge up, jump forward, and manage to catch two. Fada is going to be able to set up the two-man crunch. They're going to beat down Spartan and manage to catch Skylark with the Ice Path, meaning other two for four bears. That works out great for them. Like, they get the twofer and then Nyx even stays at the top lane to continue pre pressuring matter. I often see an offlaner there just commit the TP, come in and be like, oh yeah, it worked out well, they got those two kills, but he wasn't yeah. needed. So he like, gets that extra bit of efficiency where he's still top lane, he's still farming, halfway to his blink dagger. And Ad Finum have to start becoming a little bit concerned that their strong laning stage has started to fall apart with some early bears rotations. 40 mana. Every single time to bounce back that uh, death pulse. But yep. with the rotation of the ogre coming in, he actually pops the vendetta and will use that extra movement speed. It seems to 
get himself back to uh, back to base, safely healed up. Hero is going to feel the pressure oh, once again from Skylark and BB next time. Smoke screen goes out, not really catching anything. Hero does know the ins and out of these trees pretty well. Gives himself a nice yep. little blocking area every single time off the Spirit Bear. A lot of bears you see not skill up the druid form until a bit later on, but he's had so many ganks and pressure coming down his way, it's more than made up for him with the extra HP bonus. And that is a nicely timed entangle. Right as Forever came in for the gank, and they're going to be able to catch two. Skylark doesn't have a surge for five seconds with the Absor closing in with a crush. It seems no way out for Skylark. This is just moving so well. Like. It's kind of similar story to last game. The lanes go a bit rough on them, but this game, even earlier, we see bears start making great rotations to salvage a slight disadvantage in the early game, and all of a sudden, things are looking a whole lot better for them. They haven't CS well in the lanes. The top three CSs are still all on the Adfinim side, but they're making up for it by getting these key mid-game kills. Forest Staff, sure enough. Mothra, same build. Red's four staff is going to be his first choice. See if that pays out, because they're going to need his impacts, especially with Thug about to go down. Other hero who probably needs a four staff zone into a Hurricane Pike is... See, mobility come down from Bears is going to catch this sniper every single time he pushes a little bit too far forward. Radiant Bottom lane tower is going to go down, though, and that's going to be a faster mech for Skylark and pushes Fero off the lane. It's still like that that timing with the the Darkseer mech and the Necrophos not looking like it's going to come quite as fast as Adfinim would hope for. And could be slowed down even further if Bears can find some kills at this top lane spot. And that's a TP to get out of here. And we'll have to see if Adfinim make a play to defend this one or if they're just going to let it go. Haven't qu They've got the money for the four star on the Necrophos, but he hasn't been able to complete it. He needs to get to that side shop if he wants to buy it. And without it, he may actually be a sitting duck up here. Radiant's lane is full of monsters right now. Bears. Forever is going to be leading the way here with a Vendetta. Wrap around behind the tower. See if they can get some vision for this dive. Vada's ready to go. He's got triple remnants. And they've got an Amplify damage on to uh, Madara. Meanwhile, mid lane, they're actually going for a dive behind the tier 1 tower. Adam is going to be in some serious trouble. He is actually going to be Ion Shelled while Replica up. Back over to top lane for Ev. Does make the dive into the tower, but looks like they couldn't actually catch anything. Yeah. Just Vendetta's on in, and Vendetta's on out. Goes for Spartan, actually. Does have a wand up his sleeves there. They're going to be able to catch Madara, who couldn't actually save his oh, ally in time. They're not going to be able to get enough done. Okay, <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> what happened there, but... That was... They survived the tower dive. Like, Ember Spirit aggressively fire Remnant in, going for the dive. And is he gonna get some of these kills here with the help of Skylar? Double Ion Shell stun, double Impale stun as well. Managed to get off the Savage War. And for them, can't do anything. They do manage to at least pick up the Slardar, but in the back lines, Thug peppering away at Firo. Not gonna be able to get that extra kill, though, as he doesn't have a Sassy anymore. But... Yeah, that was odd from Adfinim, like, going back in at top lane after they'd survived the initial aggression. Like, the, the lane ward led to a fire remnant in, and then Necro just popped his ghost shroud, healed up with the wand and the death pulse, and survived it. Oh, Fana couldn't quite close that distance with Thug, and that's gonna be bad. He instead turns for Spartan. They do manage to get off a really good ice path, and look with fire, Spartan survives. The Absorb gets off the Amplified damage, but it looks like Forev... Uh-oh, Forev! He actually jumps right in, does manage to get off a really good spike carapace. The sun's out too. There goes a crush on the two as well. But with the mech and the heals, this is the timing we're looking at now for Ad Finum. The unstoppable sustain in five man. Bear. Bears may not be able to crack them open anymore. Yeah. The Nick's having all those levels and carapace really helping him out and paying off there. They will still lose the tower. Can't really defend that at the moment, but. All it's going to take is like a blink dagger on Yapster and suddenly Bears will be ready to fight. Martin, they're thinking about it. Fada's going to jump to the back lines, go for Thug. They managed to get off the Impale and the Stun. They actually used the Reaper Scythe, though, that blows through the Flame Guard, and Thug is not threatened anymore. He turns and fights. Meanwhile, Spartan, he's going to be taken out by Bears, but they have all these heroes now on the run from Bears. Slowed down, low HP, but it seems like the Shrapnel is not enough. If they get to the Shrine High Ground, and Finum do not pursue, so they just lose Spartan, get the tower, Ultimately, uh, a trade-off there that won't mean too much either way. Yeah, Fata finds a rune as well, so he's back in, going aggressive with a bit of extra health as well as an invis, but... It doesn't look like he's going to find too much immediately. They 
group up on the Adventum side around the shrine and possible smoke from this. They don't actually have one at the moment, so... Back, we'll just... DP away. Adara is just going to give up this uh, whole entire tower, it seems, and instead, Adventum are going to press her mid. I mean, they, they push pretty fast with the Bloodlust, so why not? The Macropaya Ice Path trying to delay things. The, assuming that Siege Creep goes down, which it will, that it'll be a pretty good effort from Adam to at least delay for now. MNT's behind the tower, though, so he's got to stay tucked away in these trees. With four heroes around, this is a very risky place to be. Heroes are beginning to rotate for Rev. How you doing? It's Skylark. Managed to get off a combination there, but uh, didn't expect so many heroes behind his tower. Quickly gets gone on and brought down with help the assassin. It looks like this mid tower is going to drop without much of a contest here from bears. They try and rotate, try and do what they can, but ultimately I think Firo is not really ready to fight just yet. They don't quite have the veil on Ember Spirit either, so it seems like Ad Venom, they are large and in charge for now. MNT. Thought he'd maybe found an ember there, not the case. Yeah, Ferrox is trying to split push, keep a couple heroes top, keep Adfinum honest so that they can't just kind of group up as four or five, start taking towers and fights, make sure that they have to at least split up and come back to defend somewhat. But as it stands, yeah, Thug has a four staff of his own now. Almost a complete dragon. Surprisingly, he's actually held onto a lot of this money. Like, you've got a complete four staff, normally you want that on your hero, but uh, hasn't been able to uh, get those items out to him just yet. But Adfinum look fairly strong around this item timing of theirs. They're going to have the level 2 Necroalty soon. They've got the full Hurricane Pike on Sniper. So mobility all across the board for them. And the scouting capabilities of Ricky is where they get especially strong when they're making these aggressive plays because they get to see what's coming their way. They get to find those pickoffs using that scouting capability. Hey, they've got uh, level 2 Reaper Scythe now uh, for the Necrophos. Skylark is going to be building a force staff of his own on the Dark Seer, and Thug has his Hurricane Pike. So, pretty big items, but is it going to be enough for them to turn towards more objectives? They don't really have uh, anything easy to take. Slaughter has a blink dagger, which is perhaps dangerous if uh, someone gets caught out with this. And that's really how you want to deal with and verse the necro is have someone to hero that can jump on him and burst him down fast before he gets the ghost shot off. Because once he gets that ghost shot off, he pops his wand, he pops his death pulse, and suddenly he's healed four or five hundred HP, and he's surviving through it all. So, you've got to be able to get that quick burst on one target. Seems like this time it's Anfidim's turn to play the more conservative style with the lead that they have. They are staying grouped up. They see Fada at the top lane and they saw maybe Jakiro briefly in the bottom lane, but otherwise it's been kind of dark for them. So they stick together, they push out through the bottom lane, and it uh, seems like they knew that Fada had some backup behind him. They're actually going to contest though. They're going to make sure that their tier 2 stays alive in the top lane rather than trading uh, tier 2 for tier Bit of a dangerous TP from Matter, TPing like in alone, but he's pretty hard to kill and initiate on and had teammates TPing to the shrine as well to the south, so backup was at least somewhat nearby and more importantly bears don't know like who else is there, what's sitting behind him and they play a bit cautiously themselves. But they are still grouped up here trying to like test the water, see what happens. If they see heroes elsewhere in the map, they may actually go for this jump on the Necro. Aggressive vision being taken down, maybe next time uh his his sword that was placed down got countered by Adam. Seems to have some damn good senses when it comes to what Ward Vision. They're still going to try and go in Madara here, and there's the initiation. Manage to hit the stun, combo it up. Madara just has no time for the Ghost Shroud. Yes. Wouldn't save him anyway with that uh, double yeah. remnant combination from Fada anyway. Possible punish coming in. But without Necrophos, it's a tough fight to take, I feel. Yeah, they have a double damage on Thug. His placement in this team fight is going to be of the utmost importance. He's going to start going for Firo, but Yasser's already on top of him. And Fauna's going to be able to rend it in from behind. Hurricane Duke hikes himself forward as best he can, but three heroes in his face trying to play around this smoke cloud as well as the uh, shrapnel, but looks like he's still going to be caught and brought down. They are fighting underneath the wall, though, and that's dangerous position for bears. Too low, Yapsor and Fauna trying to get away, but Fauna doesn't have the remnant nor the space to be able to get out. Looks like they do manage to get Yapsor and Fareb away, though. They killed the uh, the sniper. They lost, basically both lost their most important course. We both lost uh, a mid and a safe lane yep. carry in that engagement. I mean, that looked like it was going to go really bad for Adfinim. The one thing that felt like couldn't happen was sniper getting 
jumped on top of that it, that happened almost immediately uh and then after that there was like a three hero nix impale but the mech really salvaged the situation they just had a bit more sustain and hp on their side level four Adam ghost shroud slowing down adam and now for spartan to be able to catch up a reaper sight to finish him off and that is 32 plus nine reaper sight yapsor no value bash so <laughs> it's going to be a free escape. Radiance top tower is under attack. Yep. No, not too disastrous. A bit surprised that Matter actually died early at the top lane. I feel like those four heroes that ganked him had been missing from that for such a long time, and it's such like a common place to be. Like your team's in the Radiant jungle, that means the enemy team's likely in your jungle. So I do feel that was like a pick off that shouldn't have happened, and did end up kind of turning out all right when they killed the lone druid afterwards. But it's a bit too risky for Matter to be farming there. Yeah, maybe he overestimated, uh, sir. But even even that ghost shroud is not a good save mechanism. For this hero against Amber Spirit and the amount of magic damage burst yep. he can put in towards the remnant damage. Yeah, Amber's one of the the better heroes to have against the the necro. As far as, that, as far as like the mid game timings go, but. Right now, Bears are more looking like to recover and play towards the late game. They've gone for the minus on Firo, so he's going to be just trying to catch up on some more levels. I mean, this is a hero that is all about the levels. He's so strong because of his talents, which basically single-handedly why this lone druid has played the way it is because of how ridiculous most of these talents are. And we'll see Firo just trying to power level himself up as fast as possible to that level 20, really, where you get that minus 50 respawn. Look at this rotation, Ad Finum, they forced one to the top lane, and now they're going to bring five down to bottom, but Mater has already been kind of caught. They managed to get the assassinate on the Yapsur, couldn't quite finish him off. Bears on full retreat now, just hoping to be able to get everyone out of here. Four staff through, Mater just dives right in, managed to get off the Reaper's sight, and finish off Firo, but can't keep himself alive. A smoke cloud nicely placed from maybe next time is bringing two quite slow, but they don't have these stuns to actually stop those TPs, so they both get away. Bears, sometimes these situations between these two teams Teams, these team fights, I expect to just be so disastrous, but it actually turns out okay. Yeah, I mean that that was a great ward. Like when you're going up from that low ground to high ground, knowing there's gonna be a fight around there, they pop the ward and that allows them to get the stun off on Slider. Normally Slider would either stun first or be able to blink and reposition himself, but with the ward, it means Ogre gets to jump on him, but they can't burst him down because Necro himself gets caught out by a stun himself, the Nyx Impale, and then from there, without that Reaper under the, the Slider, the fight's a lot tougher for Adfinum. They end up having to chase after some stuns. The Necro popped his Ghost Shroud a bit, well, I mean, not that it was like, it was at the right time to kind of go for those kills and slow people down, but it meant he didn't have it to stay alive later on. Pardon. Ooh, still gets hit by the Impale, but he should be okay. Skylark's got his back and still has that mech ready to go. In fact, they're going to try and turn on, on to Ferev as much as they can, but... Madara is not close enough. It will get back in. damage done maybe next time. Still jumping in. Nice force staff. Help it to save maybe next time. They'll get him a little bit of heal, a little bit of touch up. Firo, he's actually face to face with Thug right now with a Hurricane Pike pushing him backwards. What a beautiful ice path. Macro Pie on the left hand side. That's taking down the supports, but the Adfinum cores are still up and still fighting. Couldn't quite get Firo though. Madara, he's going to be slowed down here by the Purge Creep. Knows it too. Tries to take it out, but Thug in the back lines, he's going to be the one to gun on by Fada and Yapsor, leaving the Necrophos as the juicy, juicy dessert for Fada and Ferev to combo up and bring down Ad Finum. Lose four. A fifth in Skylark <laughs> will manage to get away, but Bears not dropping a single hero in that engagement. You see these like it's you see these networks and you think, oh I'd tell them they're doing slightly better, but that fight was very awkward, bizarre fight. I mean a couple in a row. The TP's out in the middle of like four heroes at the bottom lane. That one was like a hurricane pike where Lone Drew got pushed in the ancients and so unfortunate for the Necrophos. The the ultimate was two seconds off being up when he was in range of the Lone Druid, so he couldn't Reaper the Lone Druid to finish him off, and then he got purged up by some really nice micro on the safety creep from Firo, and then by the time he had Reaper up, there was no one to Reaper, and the rest of the Adfinim team was just getting eaten alive by that AoE combo, so really well executed team fight, and feels like Bears for a new team are looking at their, their coordination in these fights is like from an experienced veteran team. Yeah, they seem to have some some really good ideas on on strategy as well. Counter ward and ward combination laid down by Spartan is going to spot out a deep observer ward, but uh, probably means that yeah, bears know that he laid down a ward as well. So 
They'll take all that down. They're letting Absor do all the right clicking, so he's the only one showing for now, except for the two heroes in lane. Looks like they're going to go for this tier two tower. And I had Finn, we talked about this timing of theirs and how they have the mech. And they were kind of doing it for a small period around that 15 minute marker, but now it's 25 minutes. And after a disastrous team fight, it seems like Bears are the ones in control now. Yeah, I mean, Sniper's still very farmed, but it doesn't really feel like he's packing much of a punch with just the Hurricane Pike until he gets a Maelstrom so he can have those Bloodlusted... Oh, he's, oh, he's got it now. So he'll have the Bloodlust with the Chain Lightning attack. Uh, he will dish out a lot more damage, but it's also a bit dangerous because you're doing that into, like, a Nyx Carapace. Um, so you've got to be a bit careful about how you approach the fight to make sure you don't get disabled and then initiated on, but... Even so, I imagine that Finnem are not going to be happy with what they've accomplished. They've gone for very heavy on the early game items, like they have triple four star. They've got all this kind of early game focus with their draft, and they haven't been able to really turn it into towers or into successful team fights. Even though they farm well and gotten like these items up nice and fast, it's been bears just executing better. Oh, Forev. I think it was on the edge of that dire scan turned red they come up yeah, does go oh, jump in nice crush into a triple remnant that's gonna blow up four heroes add Finum are you gonna get dropped here unless a vacuum turnaround skylark actually gets a decent amount of damage done with thug getting some huge mjolnir proxy tries to fight for it and will win oh that my duel God, too. That's what the that's hell gods how how is that fight okay. even close <laughs> we'll see if i run is so dead. like all sniper right, we're good how much damage yeah. that Sniper do? Just bloodlusted, right-clicking away. There we go. Sniper, 4k damage, his team. Yeah. Not even 1k, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I was like, all right, four-man crush, four-man uh, remnant. That's got to be just game over. But somehow Skylar gets off a vacuum, and that Sniper just ate them alive for a, for a couple seconds. Yeah. I mean, the Maelstrom makes such a big difference in your damage output as a Sniper. That's like the big game changer in the mid game when you pick that up um, to go with the, the Hurricane Pike and you can really see it there. It made such a massive difference. Right, but I mean, at the same time, it was the perfect initiation. They didn't really, they shouldn't have sent it a chance to even be competitive in that fight. But Sniper at least made it not a complete team wipe for them, but great initiation from Bears and well, things are going to be tough for them from here on out. Well, for the Ad Finum side, that is. That's for sure. Forev cancels his TP to the bottom lane. He's the one holding the gems. Wants to make sure he is not caught out in that regard. Is going to be building into a Radiance. Uh, have it pretty quick here. If they have uh, another team fight like that, maybe a, uh, a Roshan attempt. Looks like they're going to smoke out. See if they can find a good team fight good enough, and maybe they can pressure that tier two mid. Maybe even just a pick that allow them to take Aegis jump forward. Madara is going to be the target here. Tries to get the remnants off, but the four staff managed to get himself away. Skylark does get stunned up, though, in the back line. Out of mana here, so he can't actually use the mech. Reaper Scythe goes down, brings down Adam, and that'll help the regen out. Madara tries to heal his allies, and they do finally get up that mech, so Adfinim's going to be okay now. Maybe next time, manage to get himself away. Thug right in the middle of things, guy trying to go for Firo, desperately trying to finish off that lone druid. Ninja to bring him down with the help of Madara, but in the end, it does cost him his life. Now, it's just the Seeing whatever heroes we can grab. Ghost Round slowing down Fada. Yeah, I'm sure he's actually going to turn around and get a nice little bash there to finish off Spartan. Well timed, but can they actually finish off the Necrophos? He's going to be able to get a 4 staff back. Maybe next time. Nicely timed smoke screen. That's going to be able to stop the There's stun of Yapsor. Almost finishing him off, too. Madara hopes to be able to get him with just a little bit of heartache, and that's it. He's healing Managed a lot. Managed to get him a little bit more. Fada running himself down. Oh, Has to blink Reaper number two is ready. Out. Rev. Is he going to be the victim of this next Reaper? Turns around, hits the Impale. There it is. All right, he gives himself the distance now. He will be okay, but Adfinum finally striking back in a, a pretty damn decent team fight, and a big part of that was that Necrophos, uh, aside from all the other team fights, this one was a bit different. We got a very early Reaper side kill. Yeah, the, it makes such a big difference when you're playing this hero. It's kind of this weird mechanic where if you don't get a kill on Necrophos in the middle of a team fight, your hero does nowhere near as much as getting one. You get such a, a kill amount of HP and mana regen out of a out of that first hero kill because of the, the death pulse bonus that not getting a kill makes such a big difference as to how tanky you are in a fight. And we see it there. Necro stays alive. He gets that kill later on with the hard stop aura as well, which gives him another big boost. So. Big, big difference for Adfinim when Necro is able to fully do what the hero is meant to do. 
Maybe next time, comes back. They do have a Blink Dagger on the Necropos, so the initiation just got a whole lot stronger for Adfinim. Opportunities for that first Reaper sight. Even Firo is going to have to play careful around that one. We've seen the way that Sniper has been playing this game. He's been addressing Firo every single time in the team fight. He's just been uh, focusing him down first above all others, and it's kept the Lone Druid out of the engagements for the most part. Yeah, it feels like Firo's still going to need a few more items to come online. Something we talked a bit about during the draft, how this is a, the timings for Adfinim should come early. It does feel like this is when you'd expect Firo to be a bit more ready, but he's gone for the Midas, so he's gone for a bit of a slow build. He's also got pressure. Like, his early game was very rough with the Dark Seer Ricky Lane, so he's still playing catch-up, still looking for that mobility item in the Hurricane Pike, may need, like, a BKB of his own, may need just to go for some extra stats. Maybe next time, Finim, fight up. So what do you think? Adfinim, they they won a team fight recently. They've got this Blink Dagger pickup. They've got some good damage. What do you think their next plan is? When they reach their next big peak around their BKBs, like when they have BKB on Sniper and Necrophos, they're very hard to fight into. There's such a, I mean, it's all magic damage and the disables for the Bears team fight outside of the Lone Druid, who isn't even really right clicking all that hard just yet. So they get very strong with BKBs. The thing is, they're not really that close to them, so they don't want to just sit around trying to farm. They want to try and make another smoke play fairly soon, I imagine, uh, get a good initiation off and try and regain some map control, because right now they've got just the one ward around the Roche pit. They've got to be concerned that bears are going to go for a Roche themselves. Uh, this vision around the the top to mid area of the map where you see two Raiden Observer wards is just crucial right now. Wouldn't even mind seeing Adfin and pick up a gem of their own to try and contest the, this map control aspect. Oh yeah, I agree with that. I'm a Dominator creep and a bear scouting on Adfinim's movements. Both teams sharing a ward here, though uh, one was placed a lot earlier. Who's going to get the counter ward first? <laughs> Adam didn't have uh, a branch, well, it seems, to be able to uh, tango to be able to eat away the ward quickly. So. Both teams know. Fata doing a good job of just split pushing the bottom lane. He knows that Adfinim have no interest being anywhere near the bottom side of the map. They want to spend their entire time around this top jungle. There's farm there. They want to keep mid push out, top push out, because those are the lanes and then pushed out you help prevent your opponents roasting and potentially even secure roast for yourselves bottom lane is like a non-concern right now but ember's just trying to keep them keep them concerned with it by just threatening to take a free t2 tower by being a bit more efficient with his farm he's the most farmed here in the game through some of this play and now has a radiance as well so more magic damage coming in as well as a missed chance that the, the sniper has to deal with a very very strong item for him to have at this stage of the game Kind of a similar story that we talked about for Bears in last game when they were playing Radiant side, they definitely took that hard left hand side for the most part. And part of that was the big Roshan kill. They were able to pick Is up. Is Fata gonna solo kill Necro bottom? I hope not. I'm kinda watching this, but maybe he does. Jesus, so close. close. Skylark has to come in and throw down the mech. Saved him. Yeah, that yeah. actually without that, he was down to below 250. That was a kill. I was I, I was just kind of just kind of watching yeah. that. I was like, all right, Fod is just kind of like testing the waters. I'm sure, yeah. but I was not uh, not expecting him to actually be able to one v one that Necrophos like. He, he could have secured the kill with the aggressive remnant in, but that's also like the you secure the kill, but you probably die if you use the remnants aggressively. So he plays the safer play, which is almost getting the solo kill regardless. So. That is a concern when that's happening at this bottom lane. You can't defend bottom lane with a solo necro. And I think off of that, Bears are like, yeah, we're actually really strong right now. This this Ember Spirit with Radiance, level 21, he now has the 15% cooldown reduction, is very hard to fight into. Maybe next time. NT. Quick, Too concerned uh, about the cooldown. That's to make sure that uh, there is some sort of successful initiation. Fada continues to try and buy space, clears uh, a Necritic Wave really aggressively, jumps back, and seeing go right uh, back to meeting on Roche on a sort of rinse and repeat manner that will eventually bring down Roche. Seems like yep. this is going to be the go. The Aegis is going to go into the hands of Bears here, and Ad Venom are not in a position. If anything, Yapsor may have just found himself a kill until BKB gets popped. Yapsor in some trouble. Four snaps away. Nice two man vacuum into a wall. Thug is just a shooting gallery right now. All the damage on to Fada trying to finish him off. Maybe next time at Assassinate. Fada, oh, four snap, but it's not enough. They can't get any destroyed. So they will manage to pick up that one kill. Looks like they also managed to get the uh, Lone Druid's Bear as well, but. Is that going to be enough for Adfinim to really take control of this game? Because they still have an Aegis mm. on Firo. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it changes the state of things too much. It's like a... I mean, they 
they win that small little clash ever so slightly, but it doesn't change like the current situation, which is Ember Spirit is a huge problem when split pushing. He can do a whole lot of damage to this Necrophos, who is meant to be one of your tankier frontliners, and Lone Druid is starting to become that scary late game Lone Druid. He's now level 20, so has that shorter respawn time, and his damage output is going to start looking pretty scary with this Mjolnir almost completed. So does feel like that wasn't really quite enough of, as far as Advent, and that was their 10 second BKB reveal on Thug Sniper, so he didn't really get a whole lot. I mean, he got an Ember kill, that, that's decent, but they don't win the team fight. Absor with an Invis rune is currently scouting things out. Yeah. I kind of was laid down just in time. What Spartan. is that? <laughs> I what don't is that know. <laughs> How did he know? Even... Oh, oh, they caught him. He was he caught. Oh, okay, caught, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, the, the tower, the tower with that sentry. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> I'm looking at that. Like, did he just blindly sentry the lane, expecting it to be like to de ward? Yeah, yeah that, I thought that Spartan was sense. some sort of spider sense is god or something. Yeah. All right, add Phenom, big pick off. 60 seconds on the clock for the initiator of bears. So they're gonna try and take an objective off of that. Looks like they may just get a little bit more. Tier two and one. Adam, Reaper Scythe, he'll survive through that. So no extra time for him, but yeah. it is still going to be a tier two down. And Bada just trying to make the best of the face given to him. Yeah, he's going to try and force this top lane a bit, but the push coming from Adfinim is going to be a little bit faster. They don't even have to TP back for an Ember Spirit. So they're going to try and force the high ground, and neither hero actually has buyback here. This is a big concern. There's a high ground observer, so they have vision as well. Which means they have to be worried about that jump. Oh, backing back, but couldn't get the smoke screen into that combination. So Adfinim missed out on a prime opportunity. In fact, Madara is going to get dropped here. Oh, that is a huge nuke for Rev. Finishing him off with the mana yeah. right there. They're going to turn around. Smoke screen. Firo is a little bit too far. He does have the Aegis, but that first life is going to get burned through so quickly. Jump in onto Thug here. The BKB activated a little bit slow, though. Still takes no the run of the left. damage. Fada, though, he doesn't have a run that left. And maybe next time is going to be able to finish him off. Now, Firo is still in range form. Is going to be brought right back into that vacuum. Managed to get off a Savage War, but that doesn't give a damn to Thug. He sits in the back and finishes off Firo. And now they're still going to try and force those buybacks. But, oh, uh, Ice Frog. You clever devil, you. You made it so Lone Druid is always up, so add Finnum can actually <laughs> go for the push. Uh, well, <laughs> you just hit the level yeah. 20, so what are you going to do? No, yeah, you kill him once, you think you've found the big pick, and then suddenly you're like, wait a second, yeah, this isn't... It's almost like... A 20-second respawn? Like you, How absurd is that? You almost want to stay at level 20 as Lone Druid. Like, getting more levels yeah. is almost like, eh, do I really want to get more levels? Until you hit level 25, it's not worth leveling up. Yeah. <laughs> but... That was, I mean, again, these very, very weird fights as far as how they break out. Like, the Necro gets bursted down the start, couldn't get the Ghost Shroud off because of a, a very well-timed Savage Roar from the Lone Druid, so they are able to burst him down quickly. But Ad Finn bait them on the high ground. They they knew they were chasing, they thought they had a great position, and they made sure that they brought down the Ember. He couldn't quite kill Thug Sniper. Thug Sniper BKB'd on like 250, 300 HP, but that's all he needed because no one else could get on top of him. The Slider was zoned out, the Vacuum Wall prevented anyone else from coming near the Sniper, and Thug played that fight very, very well. Ultimately, with this new build on Ember Spirit, he he becomes a lot more of a lopsided of a hero. He has all magic damage, and all and he's really good split pushing. But he doesn't have the high ground potential, which we've seen time and time again, where he's pushing in these towers. But Ad Finum just ignore his push at the top lane and just keep going for bottom. And he doesn't have the physical damage to man up against a sniper when he's 250 HP. So. Uh, you can see very, very clear uh, win and loss scenarios for this Ember Spirit in this new build. Yeah, I wonder. Well, it looks like he's queued up the BKB next. I'm um, wondering if there's any items he can go to try and solve that sniper problem. But outside of getting like armor against him to fight into the BKB, like a Shiva's Guard type build, it doesn't really feel like there's any amazing items that are going to help against the BKB sniper. You've just got to try and outlast it, use your mobility. And I mean, in hindsight, the, the mistake he makes there is just using all his remnants aggressively. If he has a remnant to escape with, he could potentially survive. And I mean, he doesn't even have to re engage, he just needs to survive for that to be an okay play for him, force other the BKB get out of there, but he thinks he has the kill, uses all his remnants aggressive, and when you don't get that kill, you get punished. They're going to have MKB, and then we also have the level 25 talent that's coming up for Sniper as well, which is uh, under attack range. Pretty good on uh, on Sniper. Granted, it's only 50% of uh, Lone Druid's level 10 talent, but yeah. 
<laughs> oh, he's actually switched it up. He, he, oh, he, he had an MKB in his uh, in his inventory, but yeah. he's actually gonna go with Daedalus now. Okay. I mean, the, I guess with the BKB, he's like, well, I don't really have to worry about the Radiance mischance, and Daedalus is just straight up more damage. So, yeah. I think Sniper, like one of the few heroes you actually build Daedalus on. This is such a dead item now that Bloodthorn's in the game for most carries, but Sniper's the one here that doesn't want to get close to use Bloodthorn. He wants to stay as far back as possible, so... We'll see some single target damage output that is going to be very tough to do. I mean, this Spirit Bear is just going to melt in the front lines. It helps him out when he actually can get on top of when he can actually be right-clicking Firo as well. Just because you are a Sniper Druid, uh, still really do need your Spirit Bear quite a bit. It's Yapsor and MNT. Maybe they can get him. Yapsor being brought down. Does get a four staff and a save there. They managed to bring him pretty low, but it's not quite good enough. Hero, a couple of shots towards Skylark. Vada actually managed to get a decent hold there onto two, but they're just going to chase down the Spartan on the side and give up the other four to add Venom on full retreat. He self yields as the Reaper went on him, it looked like. Oh no, they got caught out of that. Skylark. Oh, he's still going to be going down. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Maybe... It was, it was his own Yule, so it must have been yeah. cast like at the exact same time as each other, because, I mean, Reaper stuns you, so... Theoretically, you shouldn't be able to be Reapered and also Yules at the same time. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what exactly that was, because he wasn't going to die either way to Reaper's Scythe, but yeah. it, d it did seem like he walked away with less damage than should have happened. That was a bit odd. I, I don't, again, like you say, it would it made too much of a difference. Bears set themselves up to take a decent chunk of map control here. There's no Roshan to kind of claim for it, but there is a Necroforce pushed up pretty deep on this bottom lane. And... He's trying to finish up inside the Vice here, but is not going to have a chance to get it, it seems like, as he pops his Ghost Shroud, but the magic damage comes to play. Add Venom now trying to get maybe next time out of here. Thug, he shows himself, tries to deliver some damage done. Manage to get off the ultimate. That Vada actually dies. The Ice Path goes down, catching maybe next time, but it doesn't do anything. They actually collect a gem from that, too. Thug, he four snaps Give him the blood loss. Shrapnel at him. They might just be able to get him as well. A big Daedalus shot brings him low, but Adam does get a four staff and TP's out. Firo is threatening the top lane, so they've got to head back, try and help Skylark deal with this aggressive split push from the Lone Druid. Yeah, they tried to go chasing, but no chasing in a savage roll, but wow, that that play, I mean, it feels like at Finham they lose one, and then they're at their strongest when they're like down a man, and they're baiting, they're baiting bears in. It's like they give bears this false sense of confidence. It's the same thing as bottom lane, where died and then bears chase thinking okay we've got this we've got this ember spirit we've got this great chasing potential between slaughter ember nick's assassin they've got blinks force us everywhere but as soon as they run into that ricky smoke cloud if sniper's there with a bkb just right click damage it's this heroes are just melting to it and that was without Bear a blood down. Too. he didn't get blood lust until afterwards what uh I, I was just talking about this the other day it seems like like, Thug has really transformed as a player. Back when he was on, you know, he was a stand-in for Ad Finum and he was just, like, one-dimensional <laughs> Lena spammer. And now, like, he is oftentimes the one holding the team together. As we've seen in some of these team fights, he's uh, managed to single-handedly turn things around with uh, a hero that has not, in the past, been thought to be in his uh, repertoire. But yeah. he has definitely expanded what? that hero pool. I think it was a big part of Ad Finum's breakout. Like, Boston was not just like that there was this team who'd been consistently sticking together and playing as a team. It was also that players were suddenly like playing like star players. Like, Thug has become one of those star mid players. Same for Matter and the carry role. And these are players who have, as you kind of mentioned, they've diversified their hero pool. I think they're just straight up playing better. They've been, had that, just had that LAN experience. I mean, this is a team who's gone to a couple different LANs, caused an upset here or there back in like the London Conspiracy days. Maybe just finished last place a few times, but getting that LAN experience has made Thug, Matara, and the whole rest of the team just stronger players, and we're, we're seeing it time and time again. There's the full-out Mjolnir now for the Sniper in level 25, quickly approaching, so... This backline damage well. dealer... Uh, with the Scythe completed... And it, actually, that I, Mjolnir uh, active, that static charge placed on the Necrophos is going to make things a lot harder, too. 
Perev, the smoke pops. The Vendetta blinks away, managed to get a two-man stun there from Yapsor on the retreat. They're gonna turn and try and get some range damage on Amadara, but a vacuum threatens their life. So he BKBs, turns, and a ghost trap pop from Madara means that it's not gonna be enough for them to be able to get that one kill on the side of Bears. Ad Fitum. Don't really get the smoke initiation they wanted, but considering how Yapsor started that whole entire team fight with a two-man stun, I'm sure Ad Fitum not gonna be grumbling. Oh god, that hurt. Jesus, that mana burn from Perev bringing uh, Madara quite low. They do manage to get a Savage War. Spartan's gonna be bounced back, but there's the vacuum. Combination from Maybe next time. They manage to get a smoke screen on top of that, but is it going to be enough? Yapsor, he gets off the Yule Scepter. Shrapnel down a little bit more. Assassinate and blink. No, oh, he couldn't get it. He couldn't get the blink out. Now multicast on Avada. Is he dead too? A stun on the thug is gonna prevent all that damage. They've only taken a slaughter down. They can be careful. Hugs on the front lines here. They need to get okay. him back to where he belongs. Madara is coming that, back in as well, looks like, off of a fresh heal. That one blink mana burn that did all that damage prevented Madara from having enough mana to use his ulti. Uh oh, blinks in with the Pop out the side of the vice. Can they get the damage for Reaper Scythe combination? Doesn't look like it. Nice interruption there from Perev. Nice two man stun oh into gosh. a triple remnant. Fada gets the damage out onto Thug to finish him off. Spartan goes down as well. That's Gem on the deck. Skylark tries to TP away into the trees. Nicely played by the two of them. Actually managing to make an escape and preventing total disaster for Ad Finum. But it's still Bears coming out big time on top. Yeah, the, the initiation advantage. We're just seeing Ad Finum. They don't have that clear fight start. I mean, they're trying to turn the Necroforce into it with the Blink Hex, but anytime he blinks in aggressively, he's immediately getting caught. Like, if he goes on a Slada, it's Nyx Blink stunning. If he goes on the Nyx, Slada comes in, stuns him, and then stun into an Ice Path, into a Searing Chains. There's so much Chain Disable on the bear's side, it's not really easy for Adfinim to start these fights off, and that's where they're really getting beat right now. Bears are just able to kite them around, using all this control and knockdown of bears, and make it very difficult for Adfinim to secure kills. And the shorter and shorter this Sniper's BKB gets, the harder these fights are going to get for Adfinim. You've got the, uh, the infinite Searing Chains to sit on that. Oh boy. Five second That's... duration, 5.1 second cooldown, Adfinim. That is one of the big dangers of this later game. It's kind of like the co-op where it's well, you hit really hard for that first 20 minutes and then you're gonna have this little weak point around level 20 But once yep. you get to 25 <laughs> Things get they just game just changes And now he's got the blade mail as well He picks up so he can replace that out with his bottle. I imagine there we go And uh, be an absolute monster in the fights It is a build that can like fall off if this game drags too much longer You've got that constant lockdown, but as far as your damage up would go Goes, you're not gonna like, you're never gonna able to eat, be able to just kind of transition back into like a physical damage Ember Spirit. You're entirely trying to abuse your mobility and the constant M from the Searing Chains to dish out damage. So it is hard to kind of transition beyond this, but this is where bears have reached like a, a good peak of theirs. Level 25 also on Lone Druid. They've got the Aegis at this time. Shorter to cooldown on Savage Raw. They're gonna just start using Savage Raw as like a disable effectively, where you just throw a Savage Raw from your bear and, your lo and the Lone Druid himself is just right clicking those heroes. So very. Very, very hard for Adfinim to engage in now. Another thing is that I, I think the, the Blade Mail build on Ember Spirit is a lot yes. weaker oh, against Perfos and Cities because that 40% uh, or sorry, that 25% spell steal fortune. off of Blade Mail and then the Blade Mail itself, it doesn't do anything against Reaper Scythe <laughs> if it's actually a, a fatal blow. Yep. He'll help a lot against the Sniper, which is, I think, where he's been having a lot of the problems. I mean, we've seen we've seen Snipers <laughs> and Blade Mails a few times before, so... That's gonna be uh, where Sniper has to be careful. He can't rely on that BKB anymore for survivability when he's hitting the Ember Spirit. Hit him, Shard Golems! Show him what for. Shard Golems trying to take down that last Shrine. The rest of Bears will come in as a five-man crew. That'll be the last outer structure. <laughs> For Bears, you know it's a good Dave. Ember game when you you're going around as an Ember with like no defensive item. There's no no Lincolns, no Manta, no BKB. Like that's that's really a sign that this game has has treated you. Well, he's died seven times to be fair, but I mean it's it's a game where he hasn't felt precious to get those items. Bug. Being escorted by Skylark and maybe next time right now. And this push in the top mm -hmm. lane, but bears are closing in and closing in fast too. 
They've got Fana Zero who's going to rebound the push a little bit. They do have the smoke screen. Maybe they can jump oh, on Fana first. Down. Fana, he's already being jumped on with the smoke screen a little bit more. But Thug, he's going to be jumped on by Yapsor and Forever in the back lines and quickly brought down. Skylark can't do anything to save him here. Looks like he managed to get a vacuum wall onto four, but there's no damage to really back it up. So Skylark still goes down and maybe next time tries to make his escape deeper into the trees, away from the gem. Fada, who's the one who got jumped on? is still trying to catch him. Where's the gem? There's Ferev. Oh, they didn't quite have it. So close, but successful TP out from MNT. And they still hold you under the Aegis. It's now a butterfly to go with the Aegis. Imagine we'll see uh, perhaps a first attempt on a high ground push coming out from bears. They've kind of reached that critical mass of items now, it feels like. Uh, with the Aegis, the Lone Druid push, they've still got a decent minute or so on it. They can at least force a sniper buyback out, out here, it seems. And uh, Nyx is probably, yeah, he's going to buy boots to travel, so we'll slow down the Agony Incept a bit. It means they can at least uh, apply some pressure right now while the Sniper Ducks are dead. Perhaps even take a, a lane of Rax here, given that they've got the Aegis still. Sniper buyback may not be enough to defend. Yeah, so managed to get a jump here onto Spartan. Spartan in some big time trouble because the amplified damage and all those shots coming in from Firo. But this percentage and a shrine will help Spartan out, though he's still in trouble. Managed to get caught by a long range stun coming out. They'll finish him off from range. Maybe next time he's going to be the next one up, comboed up with the ice path held in place. It looks like they wanted to be able to keep the sniper's buyback in place, but uh, losing their two supports it means this next fight is still going to be three versus five. Yeah, no Bloodlust for the Sniper, just no Ricky period against the Ember Spirit. You really need that Smoke Cloud against the Bear. You want that Smoke Cloud. There's no MKB in play, but this defense is going to be very difficult now. Mata jumps in, tries to go for Fada first. The Ice Path goes out, Reaper Scythe, it's not quite enough. Brings him down low, but he's still able to fight it out as he turns on to Mata, Rip finishes him off. BKB buyback being used. BKB now down from Thug. Gonna have to play careful around that uh, blade mail. Assassinate still on point, but oh, isn't enough to finish off on Close, but no cigar. That is unfortunate for Thug. He will head his way back to the fountain. They get the one top lane of Rax. They use an age just for it, but that's more than acceptable. They may actually just look to go for a killing blow here. If they've got some kind of a smoke, they could just get the aggressive again, but. It's Ad Finum who really had their work cut out for them here. They need to get that big team fight off of the, the Darks here. And this is where they're going to be perhaps at their strongest as a team, which is defending high ground. It, it much more likely sets them up to get a good vacuum wall off, ideally a vacuum into a smoke screen, but we're just not really seeing them able to get to the back lines. This Lone Druid is just going, is completely undealt with in fight six. Sorry for the Ember Spirit, who now is a Lincoln, so you can't even play Hex him. And this is going to be very, very tough. Too much from here on out for Ad Finum. Checking if there are any defensive wards around. Forev spotting anything. Ad Venom are incompletely in the dark now. Trapped inside their base. They're able to farm whatever comes to them. And awaiting the inevitable push of bears. Will come before the next Aegis though? Do you think bears, should they play it safe? Should they just wait for next Roshan? I like where they're positioned now. Just basically camp around this plateau or around the the dire secret shop prevent them from leaving their base and then presents itself take the pick off and then force high ground but without a pick off i think going f just brute forcing a high ground is not exactly a good way to approach a fight Adfinim could get a smoke wrap around on you so keep Adfinim in their base and then if they don't come out give you any pick offs that's where you say okay we'll just wait for the next Rasham, which will be in the next minute and a half to four or five minutes sniper is yeah. working on a rapier so He's queued it up, and I think it's really the only thing that could turn this game around. It's going to be a very tough ass for Ad Finnem, and this is the kind of play they need to make at this point. The ultimate crescendo of this game would be seeing uh, the other Divine Rapier for Blade Mail. Uh, that <laughs> yes. turns out again. Uh already have... It's Enough for turn firepower, it seems to be able to deal with the sniper if they can actually take away some of those supports. MKB actually now. Bug changes his mind about the divine, Ooh. doesn't go all in for that one. Build significant damage upgrade, and maybe more importantly, it comes in now. Where the divine yep. rapier may have been a bit too late. It does come at the cost of his buyback, but we're kind of at that point where if you're buying back to hold, even if you, let's say, 
lose a lane of racks but not get mega. Like you're you're slowly losing the game, so you really need to go all out with your items. This will help a bit against the, the butterfly and also the solar crest on Jakira. Jakira as a support's managed to pick I mean everyone as a support or core on the radiant side has items as a result of the Raxes, the team fights being won, Jakira's got force pipe and, and solar crest, the Slada's got items with the four staff, the BKB and the Yules, so there's items across the board you've got to worry about and Finnum. Trying to make a move to catch Fira by oh, Scout. They're going to catch Fira. Oh, they get the Reaper Scythe, but the BKB goes down first. So even if he dies here, he won't have that extra time. Nice double force snap forward and a critical Daedalus shot. He, to be he able has to no finish buyback. off Fira. Oh, if they'd gotten that Reaper kill, he did not have buyback there. It would have been an extra 30 seconds that he was dead. Even so, they've still got 35 seconds to play around and push forward. But Creep Wave's pretty far back. And I think that'll almost put Adfinim off. Like, look, he's back so soon we've only really got one creep wave to push with they and they're hoping they were hoping up. and praying oh, that would have been like the one nice thing that could have gone their way but instead they just have to take their pick off back off and i gotta imagine that's probably their last smoke for oh they've actually got another smoke it looks like so potential to contest roshan or make another play but they really need to find some way back into this game wait do they or is it just the shop telling you there's Still smoke. It might just be the shop telling me. Yeah, the 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 shop, the, is... the shop doesn't tell uh, smoke charges right now. Or, okay. For whatever, for whatever oh, reason, <laughs> they they that's... took that away from us. So. Oh, it's not like that's useful information for viewers. Yeah, or yeah no, or it's anyone, not a big know? deal. Not a big deal. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's just potentially game changing item. Yeah, but we'll see. I guess if if, if we'll have to keep our eyes peeled on that right hand side, see if. Uh, yeah. Edfinum bias smoke I'm, anytime soon because I'm I'm sure if they had one I was like surprised when yeah. I saw that was it said like a one like a buy it and I'm like what what is this that's that's the one second cooldown on the bias I think I guess I saw but yeah Roche longest possible respawn I guess that's breathing room for Adfinum these lanes pushed out while bears are kind of hovered around that Roche pit for the most part Ember though is split pushing again he's bottom lane with level two bots now so he can TP on the heroes he never really had problems TPing in because of the spirit bear though but this makes it even easier and more of a guarantee oh man I thought they were gonna lay a trap for that uh, Ember spirit remnant and maybe next time spotted that out mm -hmm. but, uh, the, maybe the smoke cloud yeah maybe they'd set up on that one but maybe for the best because bears did provide reinforcements pretty quickly around that area. Madara jumps straight into all these heroes. Oh no, he's gonna get bursted down so quickly. He loses his life, no buyback there. Skylark is not finding an initiation at all. Gets off a wall onto Firo, but that's all he can do. And they've already lost their sniper too. This looks to be the end of Ad Venom as they're gonna have to fight this out four versus five, maybe even three versus five. As Skylark's gonna be hit, amplified damage up with the buyback of the sniper. They will bounce away. They got maybe next time, but they just wanna be able to secure Roshan first. They know it has to be coming up quite soon so they still have time to be able to take this even at the latest respawn take the ages and go high ground while necrophos is still down yeah i wonder if they know the exact timer of necro's buyback because it is still down for 50 more seconds depending on when he died if it was in the middle of a chaotic fight they may not they may just be thinking it's back up, back up by now so they don't want to risk a high ground push because i think they could have got another lane of rax oh, yeah, but by going for roshan they do give necro time to to respawn here I know they're going down mid. Yeah, they've yeah. changed their minds. They're going high ground. So maybe, maybe somebody should check the chat log, figured something out. And yeah, if you see that, thirty seconds with no necro, twenty seconds now. That's still enough to get perhaps one lane of Rax. Alright, to be initiated on combo stun up, remnants around, but good for staff. Man, just get him away. Still runs to the ice path. Shrine, somebody save him. He's good. Oh, necro is buyback. Four seconds. They still have some time to be able to work around here. They're going to go for the melee racks. Buyback is now up for the Necropost. Nice initiation from Perret. Managed to get Thug in the back line. Toppled up with the Ice Path. They brought him down. Two minutes down. Madara needs to desperately find a big kill here with the Reaper Scythe, but he just can't do it. He's down. Ad Finum get taken out by Bears in their big debut. 2-0. It was a really impressive couple of games coming from Bears. I mean, they're playing really well as a team. They're coming back from like a disadvantageous laning stage a couple games in a row. And this game, like they, they played their advantage while well. they 